In Tintoretto's Raising of Lazarus, the figure of Christ occupies the foreground left, but his presence and energy wondrously open into the distance, as the blue tornado of his robe sweeps up to the blue sky. His luminous arm expands the upper distant zone and is answered by the bright arm of Lazarus and the dark tree branch. The ancient device of isocephaly, the lining up of heads, links Christ's foreground space with the distant plane of the apostles and sky. So the deepest space, the biggest spatial differential in the painting, occurs on a vertical axis at the left edge of the canvas. If this were all we had, the space would not be available to our experience. It is too stacked up. The space must be shifted to generate a diagonal oblique movement. And this is exactly what Tintoretto does. See where the red lake and blue of Christ's clothing are echoed. In Martha, the sister of Lazarus, on the far right, just a bit further into the space than the feet of Christ. And again in the man above her and the bits of blue cloth adjacent to him. This constellation of red lakes and blues stretches from the background plane, winding down through Christ's robe to the foreground, tugs way over to the right, then launches in an arc up and back to the distant plane before Christ's luminous arm and robe pull it forward again, and Christ's gesture winds all this movement in toward Lazarus. Tintoretto breaks the figure of Lazarus into light and dark pools, so that we read his form as moving dramatically back in space. The artist does the same with the extremely foreshortened figure of Mary, whose forms and placement are vital to the movement of the space, as they provide a counterweight to Lazarus's forms, and thus give his body a feeling of weight. The action of Mary's figure, and particularly the light shape of her back, causes Lazarus's legs to swing to the right so that they are perfectly placed for participation in the dynamic arc which we mentioned. Note that one of Lazarus's legs links to the loop of Martha's costume. The dark patch of grass and Martha's cast shadow are analogous forms which help drive the space from left to right. The light profile emerging from the edge on the upper right, parallel to the orange robe on the man with the red lake tunic, pushes the counterclockwise circulation to the left in the upper zone of the painting. As always, near and far planes all interact in the picture plane. See how Martha's left hand stretches the boundary of the sarcophagus, as if she were actually pressing the stone and authoring it with both her hands. Pictorially, she is pressing that rectangular plane back, and also up on the right. The man behind her is caught in the swiftly turning current of the pictorial space at this point while his upper body is pulled diagonally by the ascending arc, his ankles are pinned to the base of the sarcophagus by Martha's wrist, the piece of his own light tunic glued to that wrist, and the accommodation of the sarcophagus to the sole of his foot. The impossible dislocation of his legs confirms our experience of Tintoretto's amazing spatial construction. <laughs> 